Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video we will be dissecting and discussing Alexander Midas Floor 4 on the Savage difficulty. Now, before I get started, there's a few things I want to say. For one, this is not a kill I was involved in. I myself am still working on the middle levels of Alexander Savage, since I haven't been raiding very much since dropping out of the World First Race. Uh, that being said, the Elysium World First Group has given me their permission in order to record this video with their footage. I'm going to be using the Machinist's POV for a couple of reasons. One, uh, Rin Chan, we've worked with them before. If you remember on our Thornton Extreme Guide, uh, Rin Chan actually agreed to donate footage to the very last phase because I couldn't get footage for it. So thank you again, Rin Chan. Also, I want to thank the World First Group for giving me permission to do this. And I would also like to shout out Layla, who is the warrior in this group. He actually did about an hour and a half discussion, very, very in-depth of the way they handled all the numbers behind everything. So if you want an even more in-depth insight into this fight i'm going to include links to layla's twitch layla's youtube channel elysium's youtube channel rin chan's twitch and youtube channel all that stuff will be in the description of the video if i miss anything be sure to let me know so i can add it down there as well so this is going to be a pretty long video we're going to be stopping and starting fairly frequently uh using this youtube footage from rin chan's pov and this is alexander floor eight you may know it as a eight savage or m4 savage depending on if you want to call it as midas four or alexander eight uh, now, the first several phases are basically hyped up versions of A8 Normal. You know, you'll recognize a lot of mechanics, you'll recognize the way certain things work very quickly. It's just that there's a lot of it happening on the screen at once. The last several minutes of the fight is a completely new phase, so if you don't want to see that phase of the fight, spoilers, you probably shouldn't be watching this video in the first. So we're going to start the fight against the Onslaughter. Pretty standard, you guys remember him from Normal Mode, uh, the tiny little manipulator that we have here. Also, keep in mind, I did pick uh, Rin Chan's partially because of the DPS in the bottom right, because uh, that way I don't have to discuss what kind of DPS numbers you're looking for at different phases of the fight. So Rin Chan's POV is definitely a very good one. There are other POVs. I believe there's a Dark Knight POV, there's Mew, who is a Black Mage, and Rin Chan, who is a Machinist. So plenty of different POVs for you guys to look at if you go to Elysium's YouTube channel. Just have to check the description of their World First Kill video. So let's start the fight. Uh, pretty basic stuff for the Onslaughter. Uh, should be able to break down his mechanics fairly simply. Uh, the One of the mechanics is going to be a little interesting to describe. I'm also not entirely sure how they're doing it, but I can at least describe the mechanic and what the general gist of it is. So Onslaughter, pretty standard stuff. He's got hydrothermal missiles, just like Ma Manipulator did. Does AoE splash damage. These seeds of the sky now, in A4 Savage... You didn't, you, it was okay to, for a black mage to get hit by one of those and, you know, not move. Not okay here. Your black mage will die if they stand in those seats of the sky. So don't get hit by them. Also, Mega Beam will kill you in Savage. You know, in, in normal mode, it hits you, gives you a damage. You know, you take more damage uh, from one of the stacks. No, don't get hit by it here. It'll kill you. All right? So as soon as he does the seat of the sky, he does Mega Beam. Don't get hit by it. Just the most important thing. Uh, he's going to be going into a few mechanics here. Another hydrothermal missile right there. Now, Execution is the first major mechanic. Now, Execution happens in normal mode, and it summons four Steam Regulators that you needed to kill. Big whoop, right? Here it's a little bit different. The Steam Regulators each summon a, an orb around them. You may remember these, I'm sorry, orb, a square around them. If you did Karn normally recognize these squares as when somebody steps in them, they're actually able to damage it from outside of the square. You're not able to damage the target. So there's actually going to be four Steam Regulators that you're going to see spawn here. Let's get into that. Now, all you basically need to do is this is four personal DPS checks. Each of your four DPS needs to take one of these steam regulators and kill them very quickly. If you don't kill them quickly, they explode. So they have each of the DPS, go take one. And if you have more than one, it's, it's got, not going to end well for you. Don't do that. Just one, of, one DPS in each of them. That's all you need to know. So uh, on top of that, the DPS that are inside of it will be given Final Decree Nisi. Depending on which color it is, it's going to be A or B. Doesn't matter really. Uh, just make sure that target doesn't die or leave the square, or it will also cause an instant wipe. Uh, so you're going to have to dodge a few mechanics while inside of the square. That's why Rin Chan is kind of hanging out at the corner of this square right here. Uh, so they got to kill theirs. It's four personal DPS checks. If any of them are failed, then you lose, so don't fail it. Baiting out the first AoE. Now there's a Mega Beam right there. Make sure that if you're in the square that you don't get hit by the Mega Beam. As you see, Vana stepped into the square right there. Nothing really happening because of it. Just, uh, you know, the person who is marked, who is tethered with the Nisi, they're the only person who can interact with that, with that, uh, that Steam Regulator in the first place. So it's still space that you can stand in. It doesn't really matter, as you saw. It's just, it's irrelevant. You know, just whoever steps in there first is responsible for killing the Steam Regulator. So uh, all four of the Steam Regulators are dead. So the tank buster of this phase, you kind of didn't see it happen there because it happened pretty quick. Layla, you see, has a damage, uh, a damage taken stack, a vulnerability up stack. 
when the boss cast is, casts perpetual ray the first perpetual ray will hit really hard and add that uh, damage stack right there and then it'll follow up with three more really fast so you have two choices you can home gang or hollowed or something to completely have to ignore tank swap or while perpetual ray is casting your off tank needs to provoke use a defensive cooldown and the main tank themselves needs to use the defensive cooldown to survive the initial perpetual ray they just add Layla, Pop Home Gang, and eat all four Perpetual Rays. So, not a big deal. Choose whichever method you want to. Uh, going forward a little bit. Now, this next mechanic was definitely one that threw a little bit, uh, threw people for a little bit of a loop. It's a logic puzzle that's uh, coming up, where basically you're given a stacking debuff that you need to remove, and they give you a means of which to remove it, and there's quite a few different ways to go about removing it. There's, uh, there's, the, stack there's the stack strategy, and there's the do-it-normally strategy. So when the boss cast legislation, you're going to see each of the four DPS is given a stacking debuff called Final Punishment. Now, for each stack of Final Punishment, you need to basically remove these stacks by taking damage from any source um, before 40 seconds is up. So uh, you could see two stacks on Rinchan. They have 39 seconds. If you could just barely see the debuff bar at the top. And they're going to give you five Discoid Orbs in order to get rid of this. Now, on top of that, the Discoid Orbs are going to tether to individual players. But keep in mind, a lot of these punishment mechanics and these things that, you know, resemble court orders, uh, if you fail them or if you try to cheat around the mechanic based on what they consider an illegal operation, it'll instantly kill everyone. So whoever's tethered to an orb is not allowed to take that own orb. It will instantly cause a wipe because it's an illegal protocol. So basically, uh, you need to get rid of these four stacks, uh, these four stacking debuffs on everyone. Obviously, the, the, in this case, Fold needs to get hit by four Discoid orbs. So basically, there's a few different ways to do this. Some groups will stack 1, 2, 3, and 4, and they'll eat. one of the healers will also get a Discoid Orb. All four of the DPS will get a Discoid Orb, and then one of the two healers will also get a Discoid Orb chasing them. So the normal way to do this logic puzzle, if you were to look at it from a very linear standpoint, would be to have 1, 2, 3, and 4 all stack and eat 5, the healer's orb. Then you have 1 is out of the, is out of the uh, equation. So you can use 1's orb for 2, 3, and 4. Now 1 and 2 are out, and three and four have one and two stacks remaining. So three and four grab two, and then four grabs three, and then anyone can really get rid of the, uh, the debuff that's on wh who was originally marked with four stacks. If I'm not mistaken, what they do here is one and three group up and two and four group up, and they each go pop one from the other's group, uh, from the other you know, odd and even group, and then they just proceed to remove the remaining stacks. So like, for example, uh, Rinjin here, has two stacks, so let's go see where they end up going to pop their initial orb. So yeah, two and four, Fold and Rin, go pop an orb. They uh, they popped, I can't see whose they popped, I believe it was one of the odd numbers. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you keep the healer's orb until the very end, pretty much. And Rin Chan still has one. Fold's was removed. You want to get rid of that four pretty quickly so that they're free to go do whatever they want. Uh, Rin Chan's got the one stack remaining. On top of that, uh, the person who had, they still haven't popped, or it looked like the healer might have popped one. Uh, so Fold and Miu just ate, if not mistaken, let's go back and see whose orb that was, so mistaken, uh, I can look like Rinchan, oh it was Rinchan's, so now uh, what's it called, 3 and 2 are going to go eat Rinchan's, so that was the original 2, there's 2 orbs remaining, so 3 orbs have been popped, then Fold and Miu are going to grab the, uh, they grab, I think that was Alice's, if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's hard to tell, there's a lot of tethers going on. And I keep rewinding to not the right spot. Yes, yeah, so they grab Alice's. He was the, if I'm not mistaken, he was the original one stack. And then the remaining Fold and Rinchan grab the healers. And bam, they're good to go. Now while you're doing that, you do have Perpetual Ray. You do have Mega Beams to dodge, uh, Seed of the Sky. So be careful with that. Now they actually push the phase here. If you don't push it fast enough, things will start repeating. But if you're not pushing it before mechanics start repeating, you're probably in trouble. DPS wise for the entire fight so consider that uh, consider that a little bit of a personal check you can see the DPS numbers in the bottom right to get a rough idea of where everyone was standing including the scholar who you can see is at about 900 I don't know if that's accurately showing because I've heard of bugs with ACT and dots but uh, they're a minute and 48 into the encounter when Onslaughter leaves the arena that's the entire first phase done now you may remember in um, a normal when the A6 the A6 phase begins, it was two bots at a time. When you kill the first two bots, the other two bots spawn. Here it's a lot more like a council fight, which is basically where you have to fight a lot of bosses all at once. It starts with Blaster and Brawler. Brawler will always stay in the middle of the arena. So what they have is you're going to have one of your tanks go and get aggro on Brawler. The other tank gets aggro on Blaster, keeps them on the north end. 
Uh, now, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm going to make th that call based on a way that I know how to do it um, since I've been following progression, lots of other progressions. You're going to want to immediately try to burn Blaster down. This is your first DPS check of the phase. You have to kill Blaster before Vortexer gets to the arena. Vortexer is going to be the fourth bot to join. If all four bots are on the arena at once, it's an instant wipe. So the big thing to remember here is that every single bot has a mechanic when they hit 50%. Blasters is going to be happening right here. Don't forget Brawler is still doing single laser or double laser right here. So they had their tank who grabbed Brawler, uh, then run north. If it's a double laser, everyone splits the damage because everyone's at north. If it's a single laser, you would have seen him run a little bit off to the side in order to make sure not to cleave anyone with that single laser. So when Blaster hits 50%, he summons a Blaster Mirage. Basically, what you end up doing here is the tank that was on Brawler grabs Blaster off of the off tank. And the off tank will automatically have Max Enmity on the Blaster Mirage. He takes that Blaster Mirage and goes and grabs Swindler, who just spawned on the east side of the arena. Right? And in that meantime, you've got to kill Blaster. If Blaster does not die before Vortexer comes, it's over. So he is just, just go ham on him. You need to get him down. You can also see Brawler, while he doesn't leave the middle of the arena, he still does shoot auto attacks from the middle of the arena. Uh, so you have to be careful with that. Now, now because Swindler's on the, on the field, you do have to deal with um, a height mechanic. You do have to deal with the height mechanic. Also, as soon as Blaster dies, his Mirage goes with him. So you don't need to worry about killing the Mirage as well. So now they have a height mechanic, and now they're switching to Brawler. Now, as Brawler goes to do his drill mechanic, which will always be, the first mechanic will always be a laser mechanic, the second mechanic will always be a drill mechanic. At this point, Vortex responds. So this is, you have basically, this is 238. So they had about 50 seconds, pretty much. 50 seconds to kill Blaster before Vortex or joined the arena. Now, he did double drill. So if you do double drill on A6 Savage, it, was, it hits the nearest person and the farthest person and knocks back anyone else that's nearby. So, oops. So basically, um, they have somebody baited out, you know, in close melee range of Brawler and somebody baited, somebody bait far away. You saw that was the Scholar in this case. And now Brawler's the next one they're pushing down to 50%. The tank that picked up Swindler is now holding Swindler and Vortexer. Remember, Swindler gets more powerful for every enemy that's near him. So, don't let that happen. Also, you can see Brawler is doing the giant AoE that Swindler did back in A6, where it detects things that are nearby. You also don't want anything getting near Brawler into that circle. Just uh, avoid letting that happen. So, uh, they're getting Brawler down to 50, while the other tank has Swindler and Vortexer. Not much really to say here. They did a height mechanic, which none of them failed, obviously. So 50% Brawler goes into his end phase from A6, from A6 Savage in particular. Now, this phase isn't in A6 normal, but in A6 Savage, when he hits 1%, he goes to the middle of the arena, and he starts summoning three types of orbs. In this case, he's going to summon two types of orbs. He's going to summon the green tank buster orbs, and he's going to summon the purple raid-wide damage orbs, while, of course, doing mechanics like he usually does. So he's there in the middle, and on this point, he's also invincible. So you can't keep DPSing him. So here's another hype mechanic, and you can see the plasma betas. You, they're basically going to try to time the betas, make sure that they come out at the right time. So as you can see, uh, Box just went and got a stack. It looked like he was, it looked like he was going to stun the beta, but decided not to. He's also running around grabbing green orbs. You also have to be careful of the laser mechanic here, uh, whether it's single or double laser. You have to be careful. Be ready to adapt to whichever one that is. So Vox is pretty much rotating cooldowns, grabbing all the green orbs while they heal through the purple orbs and deal with the hype mechanic. As you can see, Vortexer isn't really doing much. And as soon as all of the orbs are cleared from the field... Now that... Okay, so that was a failed mechanic. There was... After the laser mechanic, there was a drill mechanic. They failed it right there. They still clear it for the world first. But they failed it because the double drill, as you can see, if you're standing next to the person, the people who are targeted with it, the nearest and the farthest, you get knocked back. So pretty lucky here because you can see they lost a lot of health and generated quite a bit of lb in the process so once brawler leaves that that 50 phase you finish him first you definitely want to get brawler off the field there's no point in dealing with his mechanics it's a 10 second stun knockback and it was on four people so they lost a lot of dps when it came to this keep that in mind they just lost a ton of dps because of that but they still managed to pull it out the tank pulls swindler and vortex are back there and while they finish off brawler Nothing really more that needs to happen here. Just follow his rules, double laser, height. You've done these mechanics before. You just need to do them in conjunction with each other. That's all that you're doing here. You've seen every mechanic that happens here. At this point, if you've gotten AA Savage, you've seen every mechanic. So the kill brawler, now they have Swindler and Vortex. Now remember, every time one hits 50%, it's going to do a mechanic. Swindler at 50% does bioarithmetics. 
which is a big, big room wide AoE. Big room wide AoE. And now he is also, they're also pulling it away. Um, so that way you don't have to deal with Swindler being next to a target and getting buffed. So you can deal more damage to him. He deals less damage. Uh, just keep all that in mind. Bio Arithmetics, he'll also start doing enumerations, which are the, uh, the white AoEs with the orbs above the head where you need to count it. It's in normal mode. It's in savage mode. It works exactly the same. You just need to do it while dealing with the other mechanics. Now, you can't just kill one of the bots at this point because when you kill, when three bots are dead, the fourth remaining bot will self-destruct after a few seconds. So you need to make sure bots three and four die at about the same time. So when Vortex hits 50%, he does a super cyclone, which does a ton of damage and knocks people back. Again, you recognize the mechanic. At the same time, he'll mark somebody, there it is, with the uh, lightning mechanic from A6 Savage. So basically, the lightning mechanic, um, for every person it hits, it deals more damage. But if only one person is hit by it, it's going to kill them. And it's going to be a failed mechanic. So you just need to have two people soak it. So the Black Mage got marked with it. They dragged Vortexer to the middle of the room. As long as Vortexer isn't near Swindler, it doesn't really matter where you drag him. Some people prefer dragging him to like the east or west wall because that way when he does super cyclone you don't get knocked back very far uh they chose to bring him in the middle not a big deal um especially because vox can just jump back to him to keep him into position because he's a dark knight a little bit could would be a little bit different if he wasn't though so uh you just need to make sure not to fail the mechanic sometimes you can even kill vortexer before you even have to deal with the the lightning mechanic here's the enumeration right here you can see that two people are stacked for it no failed mechanic and now they're just trying to kill them pretty much at the same time while dealing with the hype mechanic. There's also fire stack AoEs here. You'll probably want to stack people up as closely as possible to make sure that the, the AoEs aren't all over the place. You, know, you just don't want them to be all over the place. So you can see Black Mage. You can see Sai and Mew split the mechanic over there by the, looks like the C marker. Uh, so as long, and then the, the debuff passes the Sai. The longer you take in this phase, the more of those passes you need to do. But honestly, if you're on, if you're on track for the Enrage, you probably won't have it pass more than once. Sometimes not even. You can see they just barely... If they didn't get knocked back... Uh, actually, no, it probably wouldn't have made a difference. So you can see Vortexer is casting Self-Destruct when Swindler died. So there, you're done with the second phase. And now you know what happens next. Uh, Super Sentai mode activates and Bruticus joins the... Whatever, Voltron, Bruticus, wh whatever you want to call him. He's Brute Justice. He joins the arena, but when he joins the arena, he's not going to be as gentle as he was in normal mode. He's going to, he's, it's, it's going to do a lot of damage, it's about 15,000 damage, uh, his transformation. So make sure you mitigate it, heal afterwards. So a lot, again, a lot of these mechanics are going to be very similar, but hit a lot harder. Flamethrower, uh, it's going to be the first one you see coming up here. It's a lot of damage to the tank. It's just a big AOE cleave. Double punch, double rocket punch, split with both of your tanks. You can see both tanks split the damage there. And then he's going to follow up with uh, long, ne uh, long Needles and Short Needles, as well as Seed of the Sky. So Short Needles just a, a persistent AoE. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you have things like Sucker. You're going to want to use any sort of things to reduce damage. To reduce damage here, but you also have to remain quite mobile. So Suckers, Medica 2s, uh, you can see that there's Mantras, Whispering Dawns, there's Regens on the tanks to make sure that the healers have time to AoE heal here. You use, use things. Just use things here. There's more, there's even more cooldowns than that. I just, I can't even see them all because there's just so many of them. Like, see, look, there's also, it looks like a fake covenant uh, on the group, or at least it was a, um, it's one of the fairy buffs. I can't identify it. So the long needles here are the ones that are the two prey markers that are marked. There are flamethrowers going out at the same time while these seeds of the sky are raining down. Um, the short needles persist in AoE. The prey markers basically just need to be away from the group. It just means that person's going to take a big hit and they need to be pretty high HP. So you can see they also got a quick mitigation there. Uh, long Needle hits, does a bunch of damage. Uh, it does, it does, I think Layla said like 16,000, something like that before mitigations. So it's pretty important that they got that out of the way. So you can't see shit right now because of all the AoEs that are exploding. And at the same time, you can see that Brute Justice is channeling a Mega Beam. Basically, all you need to do is uh, know that that Mega Beam is going to target a random party member. And you can, you're going to have a really hard time seeing who it is. So if everybody uh, leaves a section open, so like, for example, uh, in this case, they left the north side of the arena, or they did their best to leave the north side of the arena open, while everybody else kind of baits it in a different direction, it means that as long as you go to the north side of the arena, no matter what, you'll be safe from Mega Beam. So you just want to make sure you have a pattern of baiting it so that people can move very little in order to dodge it. You also want to start moving into the boss at this point if you're not a designated target. We'll talk about who the designated target's going to be in a second. You see the Mega Beam goes off. You kind of get a second to figure it out right there. Now he's going to super jump. Now in normal mode, super jump, he jumps to the farthest target. Uh, and that's it. If you're standing next to that target, you get knocked back. 
and stunned pretty much the same way that you did with the the double uh the double drill you know when that happens i'm sure you guys have seen it normal mode a million times for super jump hits like five people it's it happens in the duty finder all the time so what they're doing is they have the black mage uh bait it a lot of people do it different ways a lot of people have the off tank bait it because you know it's a pretty big hit so they don't have to mitigate it all that much by having the black mage mitigate it though the black mage doesn't really need to move to do mechanics uh afterwards so it just gives the black mage more damage up time obviously if you have like a summoner or something it doesn't really matter because you don't really have a job that relies on that maybe a bard or machinist or something like that but uh you can use personal cooldowns on top of mitigations like stone skin eloquium to help reduce that damage so it jumps to the black mage whatever right and then he does apocalyptic ray same does exactly the same thing as it does in normal so just get behind him when he does it and then at this point, he kind of does what he does in uh, normal mode, where he kind of repeats the mechanics. He'll do more flamethrowers, more double rocket punches. He'll do another set of short and long needles, and he'll do another super jump. So he's basically just going to repeat exactly the first phase, that he, the first everything we just described, but he's going to do it again and an extra flamethrower right there. So here comes the short and long needles, uh, pretty much handled the exact same way. Oh, and by the way, just like with uh, normal mode, um, there is also a split damage mechanic, uh, as you remember it from Thornton. It's called Dragon's Rage there. Here it's not called that, but uh, it still does damage, so you have to be careful. A Mega Beam to dodge, as per usual, a Super Jump. And right after the Super Jump, he's going to do a Justice Kick. This kick hits pretty friggin' hard. Boom! Right there. That was through a lot of things. Still did 11,000 damage, and then he'll immediately split apart. Now, this phase is a lot more punishing than it was in normal mode. Of course, it's Savage. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. So Blaster Mirages are going to come down. No matter whether you've done Normal or Savage, Blaster Mirages do the same thing. They're going to dash. They're going to target a random person, and they're going to dash at them. And on top of that, when they make an impact, they deal damage. So what they're actually going to do, and I really like this strategy. This is the first time I saw the strategy used after seeing a lot of people do this mechanic. They have everyone line up against the west wall, and the four marked people for Blaster Mirages spread out, spread out across that wall. So you're going to see, and also uh, Onslaughter's rejoining the arena. He's going to impact the middle, so you want to be as far away from the middle as possible. So the Blaster Mirages, then everybody's along the wall. So all the Blaster Mirages, look, just dash across the wall. It just, it leaves so much space for you to just not need to worry about dodging it. Like, it's just, it just, it looks beautiful every time you do it. Now, on top of that, there's chakrams on the outside of the arena. These chakrams will eventually just act like dive bombs and dash through the middle. And if they hit you, they're going to kill you. If you're a tank, you'll probably survive, but you don't want to get hit by it in the first place. So uh, avoid the chakrams. You're going to have to keep an eye out because you're doing other mechanics while these chakrams are charging up. So you can see one on the left right there. There's also a double laser there every time. So make sure you stack up to split the double laser. Now, they're checking position for the chakrams. There's also a mega beam. As the Mega Beam is firing, the Chakrams go off. So just as long as you don't get hit by either of those things, you're good. Now there's a height mechanic going on here. At the same time, there's Ice AoEs and Fire AoEs. The Ice AoEs just need to be spread out. Um, you're going to see that right here. Boom. Make sure you move out of those very, very quickly. If you do not move out of that Ice AoE quickly enough, you will get an Ice Dot, and it does a lot of damage. Same with the Fire AoEs. Don't get hit by them. A lot of Fire damage. Do the height mechanic, avoid the mega beam, and you pretty much finished the entire first phase. Also, there's a single laser right there. Whoever had aggro on Brute Justice, in this case the Dark Knight, when the phase ended, will get a single laser on them. You saw that, uh, what's it called? What's his name? Uh, Brawler spawned at uh, where the south side of the arena is. Well, he's going to spawn there. So just face it away from the group and use a cooldown. All right. And now it just repeats that phase again until you get him to 1%. The exact same mechanics, but they all deal more damage now. Um, pretty much like the long needles do, the long needles that hit for like 11k through mitigations will hit for a little bit more. The split damage right there, the Dragon's Rage, will, do, will deal more damage. The short needles are dealing more damage. Everything here is just dealing more damage. There's no damage buff on the boss. It just does more. And you can very clearly see it in how much HP damage everyone is taking. So this is just a repeat. I don't need to stop and explain any of this. Avoid Apocalyptic Ray, Super Jump to the Black Mage, uh, Long Needles, Get Away from the Group. Everyone else stacks for the rage, heal through the short needles. And uh, you don't want to have to do another set of long needles, short needles. It does a lot of damage. You don't want to have to deal with that. So this is kind of like the, the threshold, about 8 minutes and 30 seconds. It's a good threshold to be at. Now as soon as he hits 1%, he will go into another J-Kick plus intermission phase right here. Boom, right there. J-Kick hits hard again. So now this one's going to be different. Uh, there's going to be a double drill mechanic. So you're going to see that um, after Onslaughter's impact, the, uh, the Dark Knight goes and baits out the near 
drill, and I think Miu is the one baiting out the far drill. Let me see who takes damage here. I didn't see who ran off to the side. Boom. Yes, Miu ate the uh, the the uh, the far away one. Not sure. There's, it doesn't really matter what you do here. You're not doing any damage to anyone. Um, but I think Miu had a personal cooldown there, like a like a mana ward or a mana wall or something like that. So it just made it uh, it made it, it made it uh, smart to put him in there. So uh, on top of that, there's two hidden mines on the field. Again, if you've done Asic Savage, you know. If you've done even turn eight, you know what hidden mines is like. There are mines that are underground, and if you don't actually hit them, then it wipes the group after if you, after like ten to fifteen seconds. So the Dark Knight who baited out the the near drill is gonna pop Living Dead and just run through. Um, odds are you're not running double warrior, uh, so you should be able to do something like hollowed ground run through them. You don't have to do that. You could just use a cooldown. But it saves your healers a lot of effort. You know, they can just pop a Benny, get you back to full health if you're living dead, or if you're hollowed, you don't take any damage. So uh, you're able to do that. Sprint around. You can sprint during these phases a little bit more cleanly. You can even see Alice, the monk, sprinting. He's also using Fist of Earth because he wants to take less damage because he doesn't have to worry about dealing any damage right here. Hello, police. So keep that in mind. You, get, you have so much time here to generate TP back, to generate resources back, other than healers who are going to be going through their MP pretty quick. There's more chakrams. Also, these second blaster ones, the one that tether. Again, if you've done A6 Savage, you know what this means. If they throw their hands up in the air, you have to look away from them. If they're leaning towards you and they're tethered to you, look at them. That's all you got to do. It's a very simple mechanic if you've done A6 Savage. Way simpler than the first mirages, believe it or not. Um, so we got to avoid the chakrams. There's also a mega beam going out. Got to avoid all that. Now, this is interesting. So... Ultra Flash, you may remember from A6, is the mechanic where you have to hide behind the iced water tornado in order to um, avoid taking damage. So what actually happens here is you have two sets of enumerations. Uh, you have one, in this case, one's marked four, one's marked three. Remember, you can never have two four stacks. Um, you can only you can have a four and a three, a two and a three, a two and a four. You can have things like that, but you can't ever have like a four and a four. So basically, they need to match the numbers of the enumeration, but there's also an Ultra Flash going on. In order to avoid the Ultra Flash, you need to use Onslaughter's legs as line of sight for the Ultra Flash. If you fail that, it'll instantly kill you. So you're seeing like they're hiding behind the leg to avoid the Ultra Flash damage. And that's the end of the phase, but that's not the end of the fight. So you saw the Brute Justice was at 1%. They're going to reform right here. And they are eight minutes and no, they're nine minutes and 27 seconds into the encounter right now. Or it's like nine minutes and 30 seconds, something like that. He's going to come back, spawn wings, and go to full health. That's 1.8 million health. He also gains more health here than he had before. So what they're actually doing is they're going to LB3 here. You've probably been wondering what they're doing with LB. LB3 here. Uh, because this is the most damage intensive phase of the encounter. And this is where your damage matters most. So uh, they're going to use an LB3 at the beginning. They'll have another LB later, especially because the way they do the fight. Now, Verdict is a mechanic that even though, like, okay, oh, so the reason why I even know these mechanics is because I watch Team K-Pop. I am technically their ninth member. I watched them progress on this for a long time. So I know all the mechanics, but Verdict actually took me a little bit more research to figure out exactly how it worked because I didn't, I wasn't able to fully pay attention during all of the things. So Verdict here basically goes nuts and gives you a ton of debuffs at the same time, but it is very simple to execute. So... There's two DPS that are going to be marked with Final Decree Nisi. One's going to be marked with A, one's going to be marked with B. If you get marked with A, you need to go to the Steam Regulator that uh, matches the color of your Final Decree Nisi. And the other DPS needs to go to the other one. So you two are forced to be responsible for them. It's not like before where you walked into it and it marked you and now you're responsible. It is the boss is telling you what you have to do. Those two people are absolutely responsible for killing their Steam Regulators before the gavel mechanic comes out later. Now, on top of that, you're going to see there's on the tanks a minimum HP and a maximum HP. So basically what that means is the minimum HP person, when he uses Gavel, which is a mechanic that comes later, needs to have the least HP in the party, which very, which Layla has a very simple way of uh, handling that mechanic. And the uh, other tank has maximum HP. They need to have the most amount of HP out of everyone when Gavel is cast. So those people are taken care of, the Nisi people are taken care of, and the, uh, and the tanks are taken care of. What's remaining is the, I don't know the name of the debuff. You can see the mark, people are marked with a 1, 2, and a 3. I believe that's called like Final Judgment or Final Punishment 1, 2, and 3. So basically, the person with Final Punishment or Judgment 1 needs to only have one debuff on them when Gavel is cast. So the debuff, the, the debuff that marks you with it actually counts as one of the debuffs. So the person, one of the, heal, the healer has the 1, and the other healer has the 2. 
that's always going to be the case. The two tanks are always going to have minimum and maximum HP. Two of your DPS are always going to have the Nisi, the Steam Regulator mechanic. Two of them are always going to have a three stack Final Judgment, and one of your healers is going to have a one, and the other is going to have a two. Uh, so then the two obviously needs to have two debuffs at the end of the phase, and both of the three stacks, uh, D the DPS with three uh, marker, need to have three debuffs at the end of the phase. And there's a lot of ways to go about adding debuffs. Now, you also see that people have final uh, punishment again. So they have stacks of final punishment. Both your tanks have four. They are basically going to remove those stacks by being hit by the boss. Uh, that's something that you may have heard people going around about with the, uh, with the earlier phase. In the phase where we use the discoid orbs, the other mechanic there is to actually have people get hit by hydrothermal missile. Any damage you take at all removes stacks of final, of final uh, punishment stacks. So uh, the hydrothermals earlier were stackable. At this point, you learn that even just auto attacks from the boss remove stacks of, uh, of final punishment. So uh, the tanks will have that taken care of from auto attacks. Uh, on top of one of them, will have an additional means of dealing with that. The other ones are going to have, there's going to be four discoid orbs and four tornadoes. So we'll very quickly discuss what people are going to do here. So first of all, Rinchan is marked with uh, Final Decree Nisi A. So they're going to go kill Steam Regulator A. Person with Final Decree Nisi uh, B went and, go, and it's going to go kill uh, Steam Regulator B. Now on top of that, you're going to see people going and hitting these four tornadoes in the arena. These tornadoes basically just reduce you to like one HP and they give you a debuff. So the debuff, you don't even actually have to worry about what it does. It just means don't go hit another tornado pretty much. Um, but it, uh, it counts towards a debuff. So the white mage that needs two debuffs has the two marker and the tornado. The one, and the, uh, both of the DPS that need three debuffs, they also will always have a two stack of final, uh, final punishment. So they can each go hit a tornado and that'll give them three debuffs. And then the remaining one healer just needs to get rid of their three final, uh, final punishment stacks. They'll always have three. The person who's marked with one will always have three stacks of final punishment. They need to take care of theirs. Um, now, there's a couple of ways to do that. The easiest way is to use three discoid orbs around the arena. Right now, they're going and popping one discoid orb, while the two DPS that uh, have one stack, the final two DPS, always only have one stack. Um, and also, the Nisi dot does not remove stacks of final punishment. It's the only source of damage that doesn't remove stacks of final punishment. So the, both the DPS finished their Steam Regulators, and the healer, who already popped one of the orbs, is now waiting near two orbs on the north side of the arena in this case. So he's going to split the damage with one of the DPS that did one of the Steam Regulators, and then split the damage, well not split the damage, but also get hit by a second one. So now all three of their stacks are removed, both the DPS got rid of their stacks, everyone's fulfilling their, their, their judgments, or whatever you want to call it. You'll also notice that the Dark Knight went and hit the fourth remaining tornado that we didn't use earlier to get to the lowest HP uh, value of the party. So they go like at the very last second, they just got hit by it at like halfway through of Gavel's cast or like 60% through of Gavel's cast. And now Layla's got the most HP, Vox has the least HP. Um, both of the DPS with the three marker have three debuffs. Uh, Vana only has one debuff. Sai has two debuffs. Rent Jane just has Decree and that's it. Uh, now when Gavel is cast, if you failed any of that, it's an instant wipe. If you didn't, if you did it all correctly, you win. I mean, <laughs> you don't win, but you get past the mechanic. And then there's um, the two, there's one final discoid orb, so the two DPS that still have the one stack left, they can go split the discoid orb. So at that point, you've done the mechanic properly. And now you have to go into what I like to call the A6 Savage phase again. Like, you had the A6 Savage phase earlier, and then you had... The return to that during the first Brute Justice phase, now you have Link Up, which basically is going to throw A6 Savage mechanics at you for the third time in the same fight. Uh, so basically, he's going to cast Link Up. When he does that, he's going to start vomiting mechanics. Now, that's a term Layla came up with, was mechanic vomit. Uh, it's when they throw shit tons of mechanics at you at the same time. I love that term, Layla. So they're going to give you compressed water. You know this mechanic. You've seen an A6 normal. It acts differently in A6 Savage. An A6 Savage... Uh, compressed water actually needs to be split and then the debuff will be passed. Whereas in ASICS normal, you just wanted to stay away from the person who had compressed water. In this case, you're going to want all eight people to get hit by it because it does a crap ton of damage. It is not something that you want to split with six people. It's not something you want to split with four people. It's not even something you want to split with seven people. You want to split that with eight people. There is an alternative, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but you got to continue the fight. So uh, as soon as the phase goes in, uh, do as much damage. You got to put out a lot of damage this fight. Final Punch is not like Double Rocket Punch. It only hit, it cleaves, but it, it does the same damage regardless of how many people it hits. So they super mitigate it. It also knocks back and binds whoever it hits. So uh, while the main tank has it right here, 
The off tank is standing at a 90 degree angle and is provoking in the middle of first uh, final punch. So it's going to hit Layla, knock him back, bind him. And then final ray goes off. And this exa acts exactly like apocalyptic ray. It doesn't even put like vulnerability stacks on. It just deals damage. You just want to keep it away from the main tank. It, it, it honestly isn't even that bad, but you just, you don't want to have to deal with it. And then after that, he's going to follow up with final beam. Unlike mega beam, this is actually split damage. It also does a knockback. So uh, split the damage with the seven people that you have there. Now here we have long needle, short needle, and hidden mines. So uh, two long needles, same deal. They move away from the group. But there's also a hidden mine now. So you need to make sure not to step over the hidden mine. And it'll always spawn very close to the group. So you just need to determine, hey, do I run left? Do I run right? Just identify where the hidden mine is and then don't run in its direction. So you also have, so you have the two long needles. They spread out behind and to the left and the right. They deal with theirs. There's a flamethrower on the main tank. And as you can see, that dragon's rage did a lot of friggin' damage. There's also a flamethrower on the main tank there at the same time. There's also chakrams now uh, charging on the arena. So now you have to start looking at those. There's also going to be an enumeration, and the compressed water is going to explode. So basically what they do is they have the enumeration go to the very middle of the boss's hitbox, and it was a three stack. So they have an order of people that are going to take it. Um, in this case, it was on, it looked like a healer. So I would imagine both healers and the off tank are taking it. I'd imagine since it can only go up to four, I'd imagine unless it hit targets a DPS, you just basically want healers and tanks going in on this mechanic. I don't see a reason for the DPS to need to be uh, participating. But the big thing is, is that uh, I think you want the person with compressed water inside of it always. So um, in this case, it didn't target the compressed water person. So the reason why you want that person in always is because you want to be able to split the damage of the mechanic and at the same time meet enumerations check. And also make sure you're dodging the uh, chakrams, which just flew by. You, you couldn't even see them. I don't even think you could see them. I didn't see them. Where was it? Where was the chakram? There was a chakram here somewhere. Where's the chakram? Show me a chakram. Where's the chakram? Where is a chakram? Oh, pff, okay. I saw it right there. So yeah, that compressed water explodes, they split all the damage, they heal up. Now keep in mind that when a compressed water explodes, it summons a, a tornado. You're not going to freeze this one like it did in A6 Savage, but it does do drainage if you stand too close to it. And that's going to kill you. So as soon as compressed water explodes, get the hell away from whoever the compressed water target was. Um, make sure that everyone took damage from it. As long as everyone's within the near hitbox, like you're not like really far away, you're like right tight near the boss even if you're not in the enumeration press water is pretty big so as long as it hits all eight people you're fine what other groups have been doing is they literally just whoever has it just goes and dies in a corner like you don't even care as long as it's not near the group and you res them it allows you to completely ignore the mechanic uh layla has pointed out you actually get more limit break from doing the mechanic normally which can give you a net dps gain because lb3 is pretty big on top of the fact that you have a dead person also because the the tornado is in melee range here you can't attack the boss if you're a melee so you can throw spears at it or you can shield lob it or in the case of a black mage and a machinist you can shoot it from a, from a range but you can't go near the boss so it's uh, it's a dps it's it's arguable what's a dps gain it's an lb gain to uh do the mechanic normally the sack a person means everyone has full uptime and you lose one person you just have to res them uh it's up to you which one you want to do both work people have beaten it with both so it's completely up to you which one you want to do um, so then there's a mega beam. This is not final beam. That's mega beam. You don't want to get hit by that. <laughs> that one you don't want to split damage with. There's also a super jump, which you just have to recognize who it's targeting. In this case, it targeted Miu, and you're going to see that very, very responsible Alice here, uh, gets knocked back, gets hit by it, knocked back, so there's more damage lost. At this point, the boss is at about, what, 49%. There's a flamethrower. There's, I believe, another final punch, uh, final ray, final beam here. There's also a bunch of short needle spam right here. It's just raid damage that you have to be dealing with. Just raid damage, tank damage. Box took a bunch of damage there. Then Layla provokes, and then it's going to be a final beam right here while you're dealing with the short needles that are coming out. It's just, it's a lot of healing. It's a lot of damage. It's a lot of limit break generated. So at this point, you're at the final phase. This is probably the most ridiculous final phase I've ever seen for a fight. They have the balls at what, like 38, 39%? So he comes down with J Storm. J Storm does a lot of damage. I've seen it do like 35,000 damage or some ridiculous number. They stand a little bit over here. They group up. They deploy. They sacred soil. There's like, there's fairy buffs going on. There's big heal. You need everything other than a tank LB pretty much to absorb this. 
Uh, some groups may do the tank LB just to survive the mechanic, um, to test this phase. But basically what you're, what you're, and they got a second LB3, by the way. Like, in this phase, they've LB3 twice because of all of the critical HP members that they've had. That's the main reason why Compressed Water has done them pretty well. They don't, they say they, they don't get to the LB3 if they don't do that. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty important. Getting two LB3s here while you're still not using I-245 weapons pretty big. And basically, he just does J-Wave over and over and over and over again. And every time he does J-Wave, it does more and more damage. On top of that, you are racing an actual Enrage, which they still have about a minute on, I believe. I believe it's like 1330 is when the boss will automatically just instantly kill everyone uh, with, a, with a, an auto clean or a steam clean or whatever it's called. So they're just, they're just racing J-Wave, trying to kill it. And uh, yeah, this is the final burn phase. They have to do like 38% with LB3, with all their damage, buffs, everything. As long as you can just survive this as long as possible, healers got to go ham. You need suckers for every single one of these J-Waves. You need to start needing Cure 3 spams. You start needing, in, you need to start planting your indoms, your viruses, your just, whatever it is you got. You got to reduce damage there somehow. <laughs> you just have to do it. And that is a 8 Savage in a nutshell. Uh, it's a very mechanically intense fight. But once you know the mechanics, you can tell they're a little bit hard to describe. But personally, you can probably understand them pretty well. I want to give a big shout out to Elysium for getting world first on this fight. I want to uh, give a big shout out to all the groups that have been progressing on this for weeks. I was a little bit jealous when I dropped out of the race and I saw awesome encounters like this. I was like, damn it, I'm going to see this encounter so much later than intended. But I do want to, again, thank the world first group for allowing me to use this footage. Rinchan, again, thank you. This is the second time that uh, your footage has been used here. So we appreciate that as always. Remember, everyone, throw them follows on Twitch. Throw Elysium a follow on YouTube. Go, just go to everything below and just follow and like and all that other shit that's down there. You got it? So uh, thank you, everyone, for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And if you like these uh, kinds of videos where we break down encounters and what different people are doing in different roles, be sure to let me know, and I'll see what I can do about doing that for other fights in the game, including Extreme Primals and other uh, raids and encounters. Anyway, I got to get going. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care.